The following program is made possible by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo, the next stage. Religion and faith seem always in the background of political debate, our social issues, and for many, our daily lives. We talk with the leader of a local multi-faith organization that seeks to mobilize the clergy. Faith and religion, the game is on. I'm Bob Marks. And I'm Mark Simon. Welcome to the game. We are joined today by Rabbi Jay Miller, the Executive Director of the Peninsula Clergy Network, an association of more than 500 clergy from 500 congregations. <laughs> it's funny how the math works out. Uh, um, well, you're gonna, you're, I haven't even asked your question yet. <laughs> <laughs> the power of religion. <laughs> Give us an idea. Yeah, religion, yes or no? <laughs> tell, us, uh, yes. Uh, tell us about our, our, the organization and to what purpose are you gathered together? The, uh, the organization it was established uh, early six years ago, early on by the Peninsula Community Foundation, it has since expanded in terms of uh, sponsorship by different foundations. So it covers the area from Daly City down to Mountain View and the bay to the coast. Uh, and it is intended to bring together every clergy person in that geography, in that regional area. Uh, and it turns out when we put the database together that there are uh, about 500 clergy. Uh, there are about 400 congregations. There are some places where there are uh, two clergy in a congregation. And there are some clergy who are not in congregations who are doing other work in the community. Uh, Thank you for correcting the record. I think that was critical. <laughs> <laughs> How many religions are, are represented in this group? Uh, you know, I don't have an actual count, but it is every faith that is on the peninsula. It is intended to be every clergy person, so it is not a uh, group of some folks who have right. come together, but right. we set out to bring every clergy person together. Um, there are a couple groups that aren't specifically, uh, there isn't a specifically Sikh uh, congregation mm -hmm. on the peninsula, so there are some congregations that aren't on the peninsula. But for the most part, we have every community. Uh, we don't have a Native American group on the peninsula, per se. But for the most, it's every group within the uh, religious spectrum that you could imagine. So mm -hmm. what's the point? What, why have this group together? I mean, you see this sort of thing, and some people are going to get uneasy, thinking, I don't know if I want uh, the clergy mixing into social issues, mixing into uh, political issues. I, I gather that's not what you're about. So start with what, what is the purpose behind the association? Right. Um, in fact, is uh, in order to pull together all the clergy, we are specifically not involved in political issues. Uh, we are the opportunity for clergy to come together as a professional group, and that is the core mission of the Peninsula Clergy Network. Just about every professional sector has this professional association, uh, enables professionals to come together and talk about it, doing their job better. Uh, clergy didn't have that opportunity for a variety of reasons. Uh, the Peninsula Community Foundation recognized the reasons why the faith community was important in our broader society. But if the leadership of that community, the professional leadership, didn't have an opportunity to come together, both they as professionals weren't able to develop and the relationship with the community had no common grounds for uh, connecting with the community. Uh, so if you want to talk to superintendents of schools, our city managers, there are associations, our teachers, our doctors, there are associations that enable the community to reach out, enable that community to engage uh, the, prof the medical community to engage with the broader community through a designed organization. So that was the fundamental reason. Mm -hmm. how, often, how often does the group meet and, and what are some of the initiatives, some of the things that you pursue? What right? do they talk about besides complaining about how <laughs> difficult it is to manage their congregations? That's right, and that's part of what uh, we all do in professions is how do we manage the organizations. Right. Um, the group doesn't meet per se. Mm -hmm. um, let me say uh, certainly that there are ways that clergy get together. There are local city clergy groups. There are uh, interfaith groups that get together to do things like homeless shelters or uh, around political initiatives, um, and there are national denominational associations associations that clergy belong to in their denomination. But all those groups don't enable clergy to come together in the region as a professional group or nationally as a professional group.
group. Um, and so we are not politically involved because that is done in other ways for clergy who want to be part of specific political or uh, social issues uh, kinds of programs. So we don't supersede those types of clergy involvements. And we have five different ways that were um, designed within our first year and a half that seemed to be the logical way for us to put together a clergy association. We're the only clergy association clergy association in the country. Uh, there is no place else that this effort has ever been tried. Uh, so we had to at one point say, what is it that one would want to do if you were a clergy association? Um, and there are, f there are um, five modalities that bring clergy together. They aren't monthly meetings. They are uh, different ways of getting together. So three times a year we have regional dialogues for clergy from throughout this region. And half of those we do with clergy and civic leaders, city managers, superintendents of schools, super, uh, uh, presidents of community colleges and, and colleges, um, the uh, health professionals, uh, supervisors, our legislators. Um, so we provide dialogue. And they're roundtable discussions, so they aren't presentations. They're really all about people sharing ideas, getting to know each other. Uh, we also have set up specific meetings, a second uh, tier of initiatives, meetings by city with city managers and sometimes now with uh, mayors and uh, clergy from those cities and superintendents of schools and principals with clergy from those schools. But we're not talking about advocacy issues. We're talking about what's going on in our communities, what's going on in schools that the clergy would want to be aware of uh, and who are we in the community and how in some ways can we support uh, what's happening in terms of better graduation rates, uh, dropout rates, the kinds of things that we're all commonly concerned with. Uh, we work with clergy associations where they are in individual cities. We do clergy education. And the fifth initiative is the consulting and technical training that we started doing. Once people realized that there was a one phone call for all clergy and therefore all congregations, the phone was really ringing off the hook. Uh, health departments around health issues that they realized that a one way to get information out was through the 250 congregations, actually 300 in the peninsula um, congregations, and that we have been able to provide for them a design to do that. Previously it was all ad hoc. Uh, now it's by design. So those are the five areas that we function in. Some of those involve clergy coming together, some of them us reaching out to clergy. How many, uh, you talk about the number of congregations, how many people are we talking about? Because the peninsula isn't I think commonly seen as a place, as a religious hotbed, if you will. In fact, as in some studies, the peninsula has been shown to be in the lower end of uh, religious uh, affiliation. And of course, affiliation doesn't always indicate people's religious beliefs or our, our practices. Um, but even in an area that's considered to be a, a lower end, um, we have statistically looked at the one number that we've looked at is that on any given weekend, and that would be Friday noon prayer in the mosque through Saturday for Jewish and Seventh-day Adventist and then Saturday night, Sunday for Buddhist and Christian uh, worship, that over 50,000 people in any given weekend are worshiping in some place of worship. I don't have a number in terms of how many people consider themselves to be members of congregations or have religious, you know, uh, uh, religious interests or practices. When we see an economic downturn uh, like we're seeing nationally here, uh, the Bay Area at this point hasn't been hit as hard, but uh, we, we've gone through tough times here. Does that draw people to religion and how does it impact uh, the various, the churches, the synagogues, how does that economic downturn, do they face a financial crisis right. as a result? Congregations have always been a place where people have shared what's happening in their lives and there is a statistic about the number of people that talk to their clergy person before they'll go to a therapist or a lawyer or a doctor often. Um, and so when something happens in the community that's causing stress in people's lives, congregations feel it and it's affected by uh, the clergy thinking about what's the sermons that we need to be preaching so that we're both supporting, what are the educational things that we need to be providing. We're helping uh, the system to get the word out about the um, uh, the tax rebate uh, and the people who are uh, needing to have assistance in order to file who might not normally file in order to qualify for the tax rebate. So there's practical things we do and then there's support things that are done within the congregations. All that is part of the process. We're very involved in disaster preparedness. So anything that's affecting the community ripples quickly into congregations and those are the kinds of things that we're getting involved in. So it's almost less these um these congregations as religious organizations and more as institutions within their community that people will turn to when they have a problem individually or whether they have a problem collectively. 
I, I, I would say that the foundation of the Peninsula Clergy Network is to bring the clergy together because there are historic fragmentation and, and, and uh, conflict between people of faith. Um, and one of the reasons for putting the clergy network together on the part of the Peninsula Community Foundation was to recognize that if clergy 